Hello and welcome back to ICS 100. So we're going to continue our talk um, with looking at hard drives and you know we're going to be moving away from looking at like components to you know different types of hard drives and way that we can increase the uh, the performance of our computer with different hard drive technology as well. So let's jump in and start looking at some of the different items that we can use to actually increase you know our performance of our computer. So you know, we always want to worry about increasing our performance because, you know, we want our systems to be running as fast as possible. We don't want to be waiting around for it to do stuff. So these are some items that we can take into account that help increase the performance of how our system performs. The first one is our hard drive cache and as well as our hard drive RPM, the revolutions per minute, as well as RAID, which we will look at in depth and as well um, our solid state drives, SSD. So what is hard drive caching? Hard drive caching is, um, you know, basically what we're going to be doing is we place a small piece of memory within the hard drive. So it's a little bit of memory that we use that's part of our hard drive. And what this does, it acts as a buffer. So this piece of memory, it's very fast. So we, you know, we have the hard drive, we'll write to it, and then our computer will read from that buffer. So we can actually improve our performance by actually, you know, having a larger cache. And so, you know, this has a very similar function to RAM, but it's used within our hard drive. And as I kind of mentioned, it is a temporary storage between our CPU and the secondary storage. And currently, we see sizes vary from about 8 to 128 megs of memory. So, you know, having a hard drive cache is important because, you know, it will help improve your performance because you can store more data into it. So if you have a larger cache, you can store more into it and help um, increase the performance of your system. So as I said, nowadays, you know, you see about 8 to 128 megs. So, you know, when you're going and looking at a new hard drive or you're buying a new system, take into account what your hard drive cache is. So, you know, ask them, look at the specs, see what you can find because, you know, it is an easy way to increase the performance of your system by, you know, increasing the cache of your hard drive. So the next option is looking at your RPM. So let's jump back into the slides and start looking at the RPMs of our hard drives. So, you know, your hard drives, they're not all equal as we already saw with the, uh, the cache. So we have, you know, different um, revolutions per minute for a hard drive. And what this is, is really, you know, how fast your hard drive spins. So you can actually have uh, varying amounts of these. And some of the common ones that we see within laptops are, you know, about 4,800 RPMs and 5,400 RPMs. You will see 5,400 RPMs common, um, you know, within desktops as well. Though, you know, you, a lot of times you can do a little bit of an upgrade and you can get hard drives that spin at 7,200 RPMs. So you can find these in a lot of consumer um, products as well. The remaining two that we're going to look at, you will usually find in more of your um, enterprise grade systems, so like your servers and um, higher end equipment. And so these are 10,000 RPMs and then even 15,000 RPMs. So you can see that you have a wide range of um, you know, hard drive speeds that, with how fast they spin. And so you want to keep that in mind because the faster it spins, the quicker it's going to be able to um, you know, find the data that you're looking for and that it's searching for. Though keep in mind as well though that you know, it is spinning, it is a moving part, so you have to worry about a head crash. So a lot of times you know, they have components that will help prevent this as well. And if you are using a laptop, it's going to drain your battery quicker having a faster you know, hard drive because it's going to take more for it to spin up and everything as well. So keep that in mind that it will affect the performance of your laptop battery. So another um, feature we have, which I mentioned, is RAID. So let's go and quickly define RAID and we'll look at different types of RAID. And, you know, RAID you usually won't see in um, consumer products. So you know, we'll look at this and I'll explain how it's used and why we use it. So let's jump back into the slides. So RAID, um, it's actually an acronym and this actually stands for a redundant array of independent disks. So we usually don't say that, um, you know, it's a mouthful. So we like to just say RAID. And, you know, what this does is it basically, it's going to combine several hard drives 
into one logical drive. So you're gonna have like a specialized hardware that's gonna do this for you, and it's gonna make your operating system think that, you know, all these hard drives are really just one single hard drive. So it's a way of, you know, tricking our operating system. And you know, with this, it helps to, you know, provide data redundancy so we don't have to worry about losing data or, um, you know, having something go wrong where, you know, things get lost. So it provides us with this redundancy. And as well, you know, because we are looking at performance, this does, you know, provide us with a way of increasing our performance as well of our hard drives. And the way it does this is it actually takes the data and it will distribute it across each of the drives. So, you know, depending on which type of RAID you use, you know, the data will be distributed across the drive. And as well, you know, depending on what type of RAID level you use, that will kind of say how the data is distributed. So, um, you know, keep in mind, if you're looking to do this, one of the key things is you must have very similar hard drives. So, you know, keep that in mind. And, um, you know, each um, RAID level balances, you know, the reliability, the availability, the performance, and the capacity. So, you know, these are what we look at for RAID. Um, this is kind of like your basic introduction to what RAID is. Uh, you know, we're going to take a couple minutes here and we're actually going to go and look at different RAID levels because, you know, there are several different levels and we're only going to look at um, some of the more commonly used ones. Um, you know, but so keep that in mind, there are a lot of different RAID levels. And as I said, you probably won't see this too frequently in, you know, consumer devices. This is more in your enterprise, so like on servers and higher end devices like that. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, you're probably not going to be able to use your home computer and find um, RAID. Though, if you want to, you could go and, you know, look online, find a RAID card and install it and use it at home. Um, you know, so it is possible to do this at home. It's not one of those that's only set up to run um, on enterprise grade equipment. So keep that in mind. If you wish to do this, you can do this as well. So let's jump back into the slides and look at a couple of the different RAID levels that we have. So the first RAID level we're going to look at is called RAID 0. And what this does is it actually uses two or more drives. So you can see here we have a nice animation that we have disk 0 and disk 1. And you know what's going to happen is the data is going to be evenly split across the drives. So with this one, you know, you can see that the goal of this is going to be speed. Because instead of writing to one disk, we're going to be writing to two disks. So we're splitting up our data, and it's going to be distributed across the disks. And so with this, you know, we don't have any data redundancy with this one. So RAID 0, all we're thinking about is just speed. So keep that in mind. You know, RAID 0, we don't get any redundancy with this. If a hard drive crashes, um, you know, it's, you're going to lose your data. So RAID 0, you know, it's great for providing speed, but it doesn't provide us with any of the, um, you know, with any redundancy and kind of like security that we like, which is one of the main reasons I like to use RAID is that if a hard drive goes bad, I don't have to worry about losing my data because of I have that redundancy. So let's go and look at the next level of RAID, which does provide us with some redundancy. So the next level of RAID we're going to look at is going to be RAID 1. And so what this does is, you know, again, it's going to use two or more drives. So you can see here we have disk 0 and disk 1. And what happens with this is we provide an exact copy of the data. So disk 1 and disk 0 are exact copies of each other. The data doesn't differ. You know, if we went down and looked at it, you know, bit by bit, we would notice that all the data is the same. And so with this, the goal is reliability, right? So we have the exact same information spread across two disks. If one of the disks crashes, we don't have to worry about losing any data because we have it on our other disk. So this is one of the great benefits of RAID. And as well, you know, this doesn't give us any speed increase, right? Because we're not spreading our data out like we do with RAID 0. So we're not getting any speed increase where, you know, we're taking um, into account multiple disks where we just have this data we're writing to one disk and then we're going to have this, you know, as I say, you can go and get that hardware. It's your RAID controller card. This RAID controller card is going to write it to the other disk as well. So we're not going to get any speed increase with this, but we do get that reliability aspect of it. So, you know, 
each of these has their plus and minuses so far. So let's jump back into the slides and let's actually go and look at, you know, a RAID that takes advantage of both speed and reliability. So this is actually going to be, um, you know, RAID level 5. And I would say this is a very common one that you can see used. And when I use RAID, I usually configure my devices to use RAID level 5. And so this one differs because, you know, it uses three or more drives. So in our image here, we actually have four drives. And what happens is the data is going to be striped across the drives. So you can see, you know, how the data is being striped across the drives. And the way the data is striped, we can actually go and figure out, you know, what information is stored um, in the drive. So you can see we have A1, B1, and C1. And then on disk D, you can see that we have a little bit of a mathematical formula for us. And using that, we'd be able to figure out what data is missing on disk for using RAID 5. So on disk um, D using RAID 5. So the data is striped across the drives. And so, you know, this does contain distributed parity. So the parity is striped across the drives. And, you know, this gives us speed and redundancy as well. So you can see RAID 5 takes, you know, into account, you know, speed and redundancy because we're writing to multiple drives and we have that parity bit so we can figure out, you know, if any data is lost or not. So let's jump in and look at the last item really quickly. So within this, we have, um, you know, our solid state drives. And one of the reasons we like this is, you know, we're actually going to be moving away from mechanical drives. And, you know, solid state drives don't have any moving parts. So that's really nice. Though keep in mind that, you know, solid state drives are a little more on the expensive side. So if you want to use them, what I recommend is use a solid state drive to run your operating system and your application and use a mechanical drive for storage. So you can use these solid state drives to help increase your performance, you know, but you got to take into account the, the price um, cost as well. So hopefully, you know, this was informational for you and you learned a little bit about how to increase the performance of your system by using, you know, different hard drives and everything. So thanks and we'll see you next time.